Have you ever longed for a deeper, more meaningful relationship? Or are you in a relationship, but it feels it lacks connection and intimacy? Well, today we're going to be looking at what we can do to create greater intimacy in our lives. My guest, Rich Walkton, has had a keen interest in interpersonal relationships and personal growth work from early adulthood. He uses his training in clinical hypnotherapy, personal growth coaching, and as a mental health consultant to support others in moving from a painful place of disconnection to feeling a sense of love and vitality in their lives. He has facilitated workshops for men convicted of domestic violence, aiding them in learning healthy, compassionate relationship skills. He is a practitioner of primal movement, which allows him to be knowledgeable about being comfortable in one's body, regardless of size or ability. He has effectively coached young adults confronting issues of sexuality and gender. Rich is a facilitator for an organization called the Human Awareness Institute, and for 16 years he has personally been committed to aiding people on their journeys to love themselves and find an excellence in all the relationships. Welcome, Rich, and thank you for coming all the way from Vermont today to be with us. Yeah, thanks for having me here, Jill. Yeah, it's great, great to be here. Great. So, Rich, just give us a background a little bit on how you came to be, you know, what I'm going to phrase it, that, that's a lot of stuff there, but an umbrella of a relationship expert. Well, I was on my way to becoming a hot young programmer and in a marriage that was falling apart. And at that point, my life was devastated. And uh, through a suggestion from someone who actually became my future wife, <laughs> uh, who became my wife, she... Uh, brought me to this workshop with the Human Awareness Institute and it just totally opened my mind to a whole new level of work and I abandoned computers and went into really going deeper into oneself and discovering what we're able to do. Right. So what would you say, you know, if, if we have a viewer out there who's feeling stuck, who's, um, who is struggling, can relate to that, what was the key thing that happened for you? that kind of got things turned around? What did, you know, was there epiphany? Was there, you know, information that was like, oh, I didn't realize till now? I would say it's listening to the quiet voice that's inside of you. Mm. Um, when I was sitting there stuck, not knowing what to do, it was that quiet voice that told me, well, reach out to this person and you like this kind of thing, so look into that. Uh, basically, get out and do something other than sit there and, and and cry, which is a good thing to do too, but when it's time to change, it's time to change. Right, and to take take action. Yeah. So there was this wisdom within that were you, you know, ignoring or not even aware of until to to say take action or to go here or take do this? Is that what is that what I'm hearing you say? Yeah, well I I think I was a result of my cultural programming. You know, right. Living living in, in Connecticut, the United States. I uh was just going along with what was going on in my community, not realizing that there were other things out there for me. I was craving human connection, and so when I went and started exploring different workshops and classes on just connecting with other human beings, just my world changed and expanded. Right, yeah. right. So what would you say then is the key to you know, having a great relationship? talking. Right. Um, I think one of the things that actually, I'm going to talk about the obstacles a little bit. Okay. One of the things that gets in the way is, is when you have something that comes up with a partner and it happens over and over and over again and you don't talk about how it feels inside of you with your partner, mm -hmm. then it starts to become a block. Right. And then you get enough of those blocks that are built in front of you and before you know it, you're not really talking with your partner and you're just living side by side with each other. And I've met so many couples that do that. Uh, that talking is what you do to get those bricks taken down. Right. And not even just talking. I mean, somebody could say, well, I, I talked to him, but he doesn't listen, or, you know, I've tried it and it didn't work. Um, it's specific communication skills, would you say? Absolutely. Right. I think both people or all people in a relationship need to come to the table with a curiosity about what the other person is thinking and feeling, uh, with the desire to have your partner feel wanted and loved and understood. I mean, just, just feeling understood as a, as a partner is, is a fantastic thing as opposed to just being blown off. It's like, oh, you're always saying that. You know, you're saying, wow, I didn't know you felt that way about this particular thing. Right. Having that curiosity there is, is key. Right, where we tend to come to the table with, 
um, this is what the problem I have, rather than you're saying come to your partner with a sense of curiosity and and genuine desire to hear them. Yeah. You know, and how often do we do that? Instead, so we show up and go, this is the problem I have with you. You need to change. Right. And and the other side of that is when someone comes to you with that, it's like, oh, my God, I did something wrong again, and oh, I can't hear that. And it's it's a whole dynamic that keeps people from really connecting. Right. So what do you do then to help break the, I'm going to maybe call it the cultural routine of dysfunctional communication, you know, this whole, like, you hurt my feelings, you need to change so I can be happy, you know, that kind of thing. How do people get past that and actually start communicating more effectively? Great question. The, the first thing you have to do is you have to know that when someone's sharing their feelings with you, uh, something that's going on inside of them, that they're actually presenting you with a gift. They're telling you what's going on with them. And that's, that's, a, that's a real vulnerable place for someone. So if you, if you accept it as that, it's, that's so key. And, and the other side of that is, is anything that somebody comes to you with where something's bothering them or they're feeling sad about it, you don't need to take it on. It's not your personal thing to take on. It's just a good role to play is to be that listener. Mm -hmm. So if somebody comes to you with that thing, the, the, the most important thing to do is to check and make sure everyone's available to sit down and listen. Right. Like if you've come home from work and you're busy and if I was your partner and I came up to you and said, I really got to talk to you about something that's, that's been bothering me for three days now and you've just come home from work and you're not available, you can say, you know what, I, I got that you've got something going on right now. Um, I'd like to ask you to just hold it a little longer so I can just settle in and relax a little bit and then I can totally care what you have to say. Mm -hmm. Does that make right. sense? Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah cause often when we present, We've been thinking about it, and we're ready for the conversation for, you know, hours, days, and they're showing up to the conversation cold. Right. So if you're presenting with to somebody with something like, I want to talk to you about something, you're saying you have to be open that it might not be a good time and to set a mutually beneficial time. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So that's key. So starting off with finding a mutually beneficial time to Just talk. sit down and talk together. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then what? So now we've found a mutually beneficial time. Found a mutually beneficial time. And then I talk to you about, from a feeling place. And it's, it's got to be a place where I'm talking about my feelings and not you did this and I want you to change. Because that never goes well when, when that's right. presented. But if I said, you know, I noticed that you uh, left your dirty dishes by the sink. And uh, I, it just, I feel like that whenever that happens, that there's an expectation there that I'm the one who's going to clean it up. And I know that you're not putting that on me, but that's, that's how I feel. And so I start to feel a little unloved, and, and it's, it's really important to me that you know that I don't want to be that cleanup person. I, 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 just, I just need you to hear that. Right. And so the only thing that you have to say after I say that is, wow, thanks for telling me. And thanks for telling me. We're gonna go about, we're gonna go to a break, and when we come back, we're gonna talk more about how to deal with those dirty dishes that your partner left behind. <laughs> Welcome back. Today I'm speaking with Rich Walkton. For several years, he has been helping others build a deeper understanding and relationship with themselves so they can, in turn, create a deeper relationship with the significant people in their lives. When we went to break, we uh, were talking about an example of dirty dishes in the sink. And uh, even though it might seem insignificant, it's something likely a lot of people can connect to. If you're living with people, you're, you're dealing with dirty dishes. Right. So I wondered if we could give an an example of doing like an active, I understand you call it an active clearing, when you have, you know, a chip on your shoulder about something like dirty dishes left in the sink, um, doing a, an example of how we could effectively communicate about something like that. Sure, let's, we could do that together. Yeah. All right. So, Jill, uh, I've got something going on that I'd really like to clear with you. Are you available? Okay, so assuming I am, then I say yes. Yeah, okay, right. great. Um, I noticed this morning before you went to work that you left the dishes on the sink and I had this thing go on inside of me where it's like, oh, you know, 
I'm always good at picking stuff up. I'm always good at cleaning up the dishes and, and things like that because I, I want the house to look a certain way, and I know you do too. But every time I have to pick up dishes for somebody, I just start to feel like I'm being taken for granted. And, and it just it goes deeper and deeper. Every time I feel taken for granted, then I just start to feel like people don't love me or care about me anymore. And I just I really need you to know that so I don't have it building up. So my response is, thanks for sharing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So thanks for sharing. And then... You can tell me what you heard. So I heard you say that when I leave the dishes beside the sink and don't wash them, don't put them away, you feel like I, I think you're going to do it. Or you feel unloved. That's close. That's close. I... I I'm happy to pick up dishes because I want the house to look nice, but it just leaves me with the sense that people are starting to take me for granted and that that I, then I start to just feel like people don't care about me. You know, and then I start to feel un unloved. Right. So you think I'm taking you for granted if I leave the dishes beside the sink? Oh, this is a hard one. <laughs> <laughs> is that what I say? Like, so that's my job is to just check in that this is what I hear you saying. Yeah. And then you tell me if I'm right. Right. If exactly. I'm hearing you right. Yeah. I mean. So again, I'm I'm not feeling like you're taking me for granted. I just feel like people take me for granted because I do pick up, and so when you leave the dishes by the sink, it just adds to me feeling like I'm being taken for granted. So it's triggering something in you. Yeah, it's not that you're taking me for granted, it's just that that's how I feel. Okay, see, this is complicated. <laughs> this takes real conscious effort, yeah. doesn't it? And, and the interesting thing is, is talking about dishes in the sink, it seems like a trite thing to clear. I mean, it's just so small. Right. But what happens is you have this thing, and you're like, oh, never mind, I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk about that. And then you have this thing, and oh, oh, oh there's not, clothes yeah. on the floor, yeah, and all no of a sudden it deal. builds up into something big until one day somebody leaves the milk out on the counter, and you're just, I can't believe that nobody picks up that, and there's mm -hmm. a huge explosion, and that's what we don't want to have. Right. So that's what's happening. So if somebody can relate to this, that they went ballistic over. Uh, clothes on the floor, right? You know, ultimately, clothes on the floor is is not a big deal, right? But if they're going ballistic over it, chances are there's lots of things, a lot of things that they've held on to that they haven't cleared, right? And then now we're going ballistic over something that appears quite petty, right? Like clothes on the floor, dishes in the sink, knock left out on the counter. And then it can go to other interpersonal things too, like um, we were at a party and in you didn't introduce me, and I just suddenly felt invisible. You know, again, it, it's not really about you not introducing me, it's about me feeling invisible. Right. So, it's, it's the, there, there's all these little things that happen in a relationship, and we have a choice whether we want to address how it feels inside of us, or we want to just let it go and forget about it. And, and my experience is if you let all those little things go, it builds up into something significant before you know it. You're, as I said, you're living parallel and not really interacting with each other. Right, right. So even using that example, you know, we're at a social gathering yeah. and I didn't introduce you and you're upset about that. So just, you know, again, I feel like I, I'm, I'm automatically feeling this sort of autopilot response mm. that if you said that to me, then I would feel bad, you know, oh, I messed up. And, and so instead of feeling bad, I want to sort of throw that back at you yeah. and say like, well, th this isn't me. This is like, I can't believe, you know, you could introduce yourself. What do you need me for? You know, and attack back. Right. You know, so what's going on with me if I need to attack you back? Right. What you is know? going on? Right. <laughs> yeah. So. So what if what if you took that feeling and you stopped yourself and you got curious and like, oh, wow, you had something go on when I didn't introduce you at the party. Tell tell me more about that. Get curious. That's yeah, that's, huge. that is big. And so once somebody is able to explore that little thing that's inside of them, they might say, oh, you know, it is really hard for me to go to parties. I I, I just feel so much anxiety before I even step in the door, and then. 
we got to this point where I didn't even know these people's names and you didn't introduce me to them and it's just my anxiety went through the roof and it, it's not about what you did it's just I'm really freaked out at parties right <laughs> and I don't want to be left alone right yeah you know, so all of a sudden something significant gets uncovered by you being curious right so not only do I hear you then but now I I learned something about you yeah. because it could be that all along I I didn't know that you had a hard time in social gatherings and there's the gift right yeah. right wow wow so so you're saying if you're struggling with communication with your significant other mm -hmm. the couple things I've heard you say is that when you feel that like exploding kind of moment either when presenting an issue or hearing it as the receiver in my case yeah. um, is to be able to have the self-control to stop to know like okay if you're about to explode there's your signal to take a deep breath take a deep breath that's that is key right yeah. take a deep breath and stop and the second thing is get curious yes absolutely okay wow <laughs> that's 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 great um, anything else to, um, to add to that like so there's a there's a formula that I, that I like to go by and we've we've loosely used it but when you want to talk about these kinds of things a check for ability B okay right talk about your feelings without blame without attacking without wanting the other person to change just share your experience share your experience right and as the listener the C is just receive it say thank you acknowledge what they've said maybe repeat back to them what you heard so you're really clear on where they're coming from right and it's just and then, three steps and get curious get curious good good well we hope you we have sparked your curiosity so come back after our break we'll continue talking about effective communication and intimacy Today we are discussing how to create more intimacy in our lives through effective communication and I have with me today relationship expert Rich Walkton, a facilitator from the Human Awareness Institute. And when we left for the break, we were giving, we were going through an example of an effective communication strategy that you called clear communication, cl clear communication yeah. doing a clearing. Um, so we did an example of dealing with dirty dishes in the sink. Um, where do we go from here? So if people try this, what might be the, the pitfalls to, to deal with? Sometimes people take things personally. Right. It just happens. Even, even friends of mine who've really worked on this stuff, they have a moment where it's like, I don't, this is ridiculous. And, and they might have a moment where they have their own emotional reaction. And right. if as a couple you're coming to the table with this intent, to just stay in love with each other and to bring curiosity to learn more about each other. If a moment like that happens, there's an opportunity to take a breath and say, wow, okay, I, I brought my feelings to the table and I can put that on hold for a minute. I want to hear what's going on for you. Mm. you know, there's a way of not, because it, it can become like tennis where it's like, oh yeah, well you left your underwear on the floor, you know, as you mm -hmm. said earlier. Mm -hmm. And it goes back and forth where, where one person is just throwing something at the other. Right. So, but if one person does have an emotional reaction and you're in love with that person and you care about them and you notice this, you could just take a breath and say, okay, got it. I had my feelings. I'm going to just put them aside for now. We can come back to that later, but I really want to hear what's going on for you. Okay. And so All then that right. person has an opportunity to speak what's, what's going on for them and you can hear that. And it, it takes time. This is not something that we do in our, in our rushed society today where you go to McDonald's and you grab a Coke and you go on and yeah, whatever. Drive no, or, yeah, drive this through. Is, this, is, this is real relationship stuff. We can't drive, drive it through. We can't phone it in. We really need to sit down and spend that time with each other. So if your partner all of a sudden is alarmed by what you said, then there's value in listening to it and right. not keeping that argument going. So remembering that the point of the this communication strategy is to coming back to love. Absolutely. Is to creating a deeper loving relationship. So in, a, in your attempt of sharing, if it's not creating that for you, then it's put on the brakes for a minute. 
And so if we even go back to your example, I mean, you were the giver of an issue and I was the receiver. Yeah. If I don't receive it well, um, your option then is to put a hold on what it is that you were trying to communicate. Yeah. Say, I'm going to put this on hold. And then you get curious about me. Absolutely. Yeah. Because I wasn't able to hear you. So what's going on with me that I couldn't hear you? Am right. Exactly. That? That's exactly yeah. it. Right. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So, so there's always an option. Like it's, it's never sort of a dead end. This isn't going to work as in the sense of there's always something that one person can do to feel empowered. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And if, if everybody is sitting down together so they can be closer and they can come back to love, then it always works. Right. You know, if, if that person who's having an emotional moment off of mine, uh, if they still have that intention to come back to love, then they will. And then sometimes people are just significantly frightened or, or whatever's going on inside of them that they can't, they can't clear all that up. And that's a good time to call in a third party. Right. To, to mediate it. Absolutely. Because this would be a struggle for many couples to do on their own. Yes. You know, you, you need some help on getting, because this, this is skills, just like you need skills to program computers and you need skills to you know teach you need skill this is skills it's a practice right it's like one practices meditation or, or one practices a martial art or practices law or, or whatever it, it's not something that we get perfect every time mm -hmm. so and it takes time it does it takes time so going with that then what would somebody what you know if a viewer is watching this and they're interested and i want to get better at that kind of thing um what could they do then to you know, get in touch with, with yourself or with a, a workshop near them? Well, uh, we do offer workshops in the uh, greater Toronto area, um, actually up north of Toronto. You can contact us at hai.org, hi.org. Right. And uh, we have workshops about loving yourself, about just the nature of love in general. Uh, and we have a workshop series called the Love Intimacy Sexuality Series, where you get to look at what love is to you and what intimacy is for you and what, is, what sexuality is for you. And, and these can be really rich topics to dig into so that you can learn more about yourself and what you want out of life. Right. So you can get these better quality relationships. And we do offer communication techniques in one of our workshops. Right. So that's... Th that's an ongoing ingredient in your workshops. Absolutely. Is to, is to do. And your workshops, I understand, are weekends, are a weekend long event. Yes. So is there other things that are a less of a time commitment or something that someone could just sort of dip their toe into? Sure. We have our Pathways to Intimacy workshop, which is a one day workshop that usually happens around in this area as well. Uh, and then we also have our free mini workshops where you can just go and get a taste of what our workshops are. And it's over three hours. Right. And it's free. And it's free. Yeah. So you get an idea of what you'd be signing up for. That's a, absolutely correct, yeah. Right. Well, that's great. Um, so with a couple minutes remaining, uh, what else um, would be helpful to leave the viewers with as far as if they're trying to create greater intimacy in their relationships? Come back to love. I mean, right. lo love is a choice. We can fall out of love. We can have these moments where we're totally angry with our partner. Uh, whatever. We just have these moments where we're knocked out of love. And the important thing is to commit to coming back to love. If that's what you want in your relationship. Mm -hmm. If everybody is in that relationship doing the same, trying to come back to love, then it works. Right, right. And, and what came up for me, too, when you said that is, you know, a lot of times the block feels for me like I need to be right. So letting go of a need to be right about the argument about what happened, what he said, she said, letting go of that need to be right and instead focusing on the need to, to feel and experience love. Right. To be happy. Actually, somebody reminded me today that I said to them, imagine if there was no right or wrong mm. in a relationship, that we just make choices and our choices have reactions and, and consequences. Sometimes the consequences feel good, sometimes the consequences feel bad, but we, have, we learn from all of it. Mm -hmm. If we take away that feeling of being wrong, then we're freer to make more fuller choices to be in love with each other. 
right making choices and you too can make choices to increase your communication skills to better improve your relationships I want to thank our guest Rich for coming in that was a rich discussion <laughs> thank you so much and thank you for watching and remember to come back to love thanks so much thank you